Hello, everybody. Warm welcome again for those who have been here already this morning. Warm welcome to everybody else to Berlinale Talents. It's a pleasure to see you and this house packed again with people. And you can see, you cannot see it. It's normally there. So there's normally the courage against all odds. That was the topic or is the topic of this year. And when we were developing the topic, we thought, okay, who could be really good to talk about courage? And who is doing courageous projects? And who is also working on projects for quite a while already? And who has a relation to Berlin? And we put this all together and then we looked it up and we said, oh, it's Christo. <laughs> so it was very easy. And then I looked up and I looked back because uh, when, of course, we were reminded about uh, Rapid Reichstag and I looked up uh, what was the title of the project actually. And it is not only Rapid Reichstag, it's Rapid Reichstag Berlin 1971 to 1995. So this is 23 years of working on a project like this. It's a big project, but also it's a project that shows that perseverance uh, is a, so it can be a big success or lead to big successes in the end. And uh, we thought, okay, let's hear more about it and learn more about the projects from the one who did it. So we invited Christo, and without any further ado, please welcome him here on stage. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you. Now, uh, uh, Thank you. Before uh, I like to I like, now listen. Before we start, please, because we have only 90 minutes, I try, try to be very expedient to tell how we, the things should proceed. Uh, but before any of this uh, lecture, we do Jean Claude and myself. I always think of Jean Claude, who is not anymore with us today. What she was t saying before the lecture. And she was saying always like the same things, that uh, Jean-Claude and myself were born the same day, the same year, by, by two different mothers on June 13, 1935. <laughs> and um, and uh, I was a political refugee. I left in Paris when I met Jean-Claude in 1958. We lived in Paris between 58 and 64, and we immigrated to the United States. Jean-Claude, no, 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 we don't immigrate to the United States. We immigrated to Manhattan, New York City. <laughs> and we're still in the same building, actually, for 54 uh, years. The same building, the same place, downtown Manhattan, 19, since 1964. Now, uh, I will show you a very fast uh, overview of number of projects we do in the last over 50 years, not only the Reichstag, of course the Reichstag is a big part of the, uh, the story uh, for that city. And, uh, and of course the works on project, and the works on progress, but also the most important part will be that you will ask me question and I will answer question. That is the, the most important part. This is why uh, I would like to put the lights uh, uh, um, down that we start with the images. We run probably not more of 30, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, and after the answer question. Now, all dark, because I don't read, I don't have anything, and I like to start. Okay, dark, everything dark. <laughs> Electronics take time. Okay. In 1969, we did a project in Australia called Rap Coast. The Rap Coast line near Sydney, Australia, with one and a half million square feet of fabric and near 30 kilometers of ropes from high cliffs to sandy beach area. In 1976, we had this huge orange curtain in the western slope of the Rocky Mountains in Colorado. The site is about uh, the span of Brooklyn Bridge, 180 feet uh, in the center, 360 feet on main foundation. This is the 1972. Between 1972 and 76, we were working in Northern California when we did the running fence, the project running five and a half meter tall fence running for 40 kilometers to Sonoma in Marin County, north of San Francisco, and the western extremity of the fence disappearing in the Pacific Ocean for the half a kilometer. Now, all this, you have a little person there, you see, uh, all this project, they're temporary project, everything is removed and industrially recycled. 
1978, we did that project called Rub Walkway and Loose Park in Kansas City, Missouri, four and a half kilometer walkway covered with its golden fabric and late in um, uh, summer, early autumn days, the foliage start to match the color of the fabric. And in 1980 to 83, we realized Surround the Tunnel. This is a project in Biscayne Bend, Florida, surrounded 11 island with 650,000 square meters of floating pink fabric. The fabric was attached to the beach area, uh, to the beach area, floating about 70 meters of the surface of the water. It's ending with octagonal shell, shape boom, and anchor for 1,000 anchor and Biscayne Bay with different colors of bay, you know, from the light green to deep blue and green in Southern Florida. Now, between 1984, 75, 84, we fight to get permission, and finally in 1985, we wrapped the oldest bridge in Paris, the Pont Neuf, and late September, early October, with this champagne color fabric, and over two weeks, three million people was walking on the Pont Neuf. The Pont Neuf was illuminated because it was historical monument anyway, and, and all, again, all the fabric was removed and industrially recycled. And between 19, 86 to 91, we work in project on two parts, simultaneously, very much like a painting, two painting make one canvas. That was the work of art in the two different countries, actually, the two richest countries in the world that time, Japan, United States. We installed 1,340 blue umbrellas in Japan in the state of Ibaraki, north of Tokyo, and 1,760 yellow umbrella in the Southern California near Los Angeles. The length of the project in Japan was 16 kilometers long <coughs> and two and a half kilometers wide. We have a 90 umbrella standing in Sato River, where in California was uh, 19 kilometers long, is about two and a half kilometers wide, mostly around Interstate 5, the big highway in the Central Valley going to Sacramento. Now, again, this all the temporary project, they stay for these two Dutch and project take three weeks, everything is removal and industrially recycled. Now, during that moment, during that time, uh, 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 the project of the rice tech was already in working. You should understand, we don't work on one project, we work on several projects simultaneously. Already in 1972, 73, we're only starting working on the rice tech project. The rice tech project was refused first time in 1976, the second time in 1971, and 1981, and the third time in 1987. And finally, after realization of the umbrellas, we succeeded to get permission to wrap the rice tech in 1995, and the rice tech stayed for two weeks, and end of June, early July of 1995, using 100,000 square meter of fabric, about 10, uh, 15 kilometers of rope. You see very well, the entire building was wrapped, and we have over 5 million people coming for two, two weeks in uh, 1995. The next, <coughs> we have an idea to wrap trees, and we tried to wrap trees on Chancellor's Day, but finally we succeeded to wrap trees on Berover Park and Fundacion Bayer in Switzerland. We have a sunny day, we have a, a winter, this is called Pichai, and we have a sunset. And then living in Manhattan for over so many years, it was very natural, Jean-Claude and myself, that we tried to do a project in Manhattan. And this is why in 2005. 2005, okay, 2005. But that project again, that project started in 1981 uh, and, and was refused by the city of New York. And we start on several occasions to revive the process, but finally we get the permission in 2004, 2003, and we install 7,503 gates and 23 miles walkway. The gates was always six meters high, but the width of the gates would vary with width of the walkway up from, six, from five and a half to eight meters. And we have a sunny day, in, that is in February, we have a winter, and these 16 beautiful days, we have uh, all the season of the year. Now, <clears throat> for many, this is the project was done briefly in the that, that For many years, I was evolving, working with barrels. Actually, this is one of the earliest public works Jean-Claude and myself we did in Paris before immigrated to the United States. Coming from communist country, I was political refugee, and 
when we have the first personal exhibition in Germany in 1961, the Berlin Wall was built. And of course, very touch of everything was happened in 1961 when the Berlin Wall was built. In 1962, we did our poetical response to the Berlin Wall, our iron curtain built by these 100 barrels and closing the barricading, the small street in Paris, Rue Visconti, in the summer of 1962. And from use the barrels that are used in the, in the sculpture already before, we propose to do a number of uh, a variety of uh, works of art involving the barrels. That is the uh, sculpture in museum in Italy where the barrels is stacked horizontally. And that shape of form is called mastaba. You have a two perpendicular wall and two a slanted wall and trunk at top. It's not a pyramid. And that particular um, uh, uh, master bar can be created by stacking horizontally barrels and angles is always 60 degrees. In 1967, 68, we tried to do master bar in Texas between Houston and Galveston. We never get permission. In 1972, uh, we tried to do that in the museum in Colin Muller and Netherlands when he's the biggest collector of our work of Earth's early works for us, we never get permission. And this is why in the late 70s, we arrived in Abu Dhabi. Now, 1979, Abu Dhabi, nobody will know what is Abu Dhabi. We tried to build the master bar of 410,000 barrels. We did that scale model in 79, you see very well. The little people here is 150 meter high, the vertical wall. Uh, uh, 300 meter and the ground and 225 meter the slanted wall. Using the scale model, this is Jean-Claude and myself in 79 collecting sand for the scale model here in the dune in the line when we hoped to do the project in the beautiful de uh, desert of the empty quarter who is actually near the border of Saudi Arabia. Uh, this is one of the last pictures of Jean-Claude at the site of the project of 2007. Now, <clears throat> you see the location of the project the, uh, is not in the water, really. It's about 160 kilometers south, uh, and that area is called the liver of, oasis of liver, and, uh, and the empty quarter is that incredible. Actually, the longest indisturbed uh, continuous desert, high desert in the world, is not dune who do not move. They are like a mountains because they have a vegetation, actually, wildlife. And that area, we like to build a project. Now, uh, through the years, uh, to, you know, myself and Jean-Claude, we're not engineers. And we need to really to put together all the wisdom of people that how the project should be built. And this is why they are, uh, how to put it there, a call is a book about the greatest engineering university in the world. It's called Shanghai Codex. And in that book, we choose the one to 30 is the greatest engineering school. Here, we're talking with the professor of Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich. Here, we're talking to the professor of Cambridge University, United Kingdom. Here, we're talking to the professor of, of the University of Champagne, Illinois. And here, we're talking with the professor of Jose University of Tokyo, Japan. Now, Mr. Sasaki, the professor in the glasses here, was standing here. The biggest problem with that project, you need to install 410,000 barrels in this magnitude position, and he had the great, greatest idea how to build that project. He proposes that we should flatten the project. Wait, wait, wait. Basically, if you flatten it horizontally, the, pyramid, the master uh, figure, if we have uh, two trapezoid sides and three rectangular sides, and of course, that is not flattening horizontally. Actually, there is a, a structure sitting on a 35 meter steel truss, bridge steel truss. And basically, the workers will install these 410,000 barrels, or like, like, the, like a, a mosaic horizontally in the floor. After that is installed, entire elevation of the project can be happened in less than seven days. It will happen like that. And to give, uh, to give you the uh, scale of the project, this is how big is the project. <laughs> <laughs> and the photo print of the master bar 
the footprint of Vesta Bar is the, the footprint of the square of Bernini in Vatican. Now, <laughs> from there, with a small scale model, you see Vladimir and myself there, our teams in, the, in the Abu Dhabi, we need to organize the right position of the vertical wall with the sunrise because it's the tropic of the cancer and it has an incredible light in the middle of the summer. And this is all done with a small scale model and from now, from here, you can get the size which, how we're looking. This is the footprint of the master bar. You see the, the flag, black flag pole. You have the little car. And this is the, how the surface, the master bar, taken on the ground. Now, I, should, I, should, I would make you see where the height master bar will be. You see the little balloon? Where the master bar will be high like that. The next. Now, all that has happened in the last few years, actually, very recently, we spent a lot of time in Abu Dhabi talking to different universities, women university, the men university, discussing with the representative of the ruling family. And here we're presenting the project to the uh, Sheikh Hamdam al Nahyan, who is the governor of that area of the project. Now, this is the more recent drawings of the uh, master bar, which give an idea with the situation when the project will be on the site. And here the barrels, we did it in the Oberhausen. Probably you remember, in Oberhausen, we installed 30,000 oil barrels in the, in the Oberhausen tank. And from, with the elevate, elevator, you can see from above. The next. Now, the story of the pier is, re, uh, is related to another uh, uh, part of our work. You know, Often, we're designing projects for particular sites, like the RAP rice tank was designed for the rice tank, and the gates was designed for Central Park. But there, sometimes, we have only concept and need to find site for our project, like the case of running fence in Northern California or umbrellas in Japan and California. In the same case, is the story of the floating pier. In 1970, this is 1970, we tried to do floating pier and the delta of Rio de la Plata in Argentina. We never get permission. So after that, we did many projects. Now, after the, the wrapping of the rice stack, Jean-Claude and myself was loving so much to do that project. We spent so much time in Japan with umbrellas. We would try to do it in a place when people know our work, and we, we proposed to build a floating pier, an area of Tokyo Bay called Daiba, and we work very hard. We almost get permission, but we have a big fight with the government of Tokyo, and we cancel the project. And now Jean-Claude passed away. In 2014, I say to Vladimir and to Wolfie that I became eight years old, and I like to do something fast because I don't know how long I will live, and we tell the story of the floating pier. And this is how we move right away hoping to realize the floating pier. We spent time in, uh, uh, we did several projects in Italy. In the late 60s, we were living in Paris. That is the Rap Fountain and Piazza Mercato and Spoleto. We did the project of the wrapping monument of Vittorio Emanuele, Leonardo da Vinci, and Milano. And we did it, the uh, wrapping the Marcus Aurelian Wall and Porta Pinciana and Rome. And um, <clears throat> we returned to the northern Italy, the way familiar, and we know all these islands, but right away we decided the Lake Iseo, with that unique situation that they have a, the tallest island in the soft water in Europe. That island is 450 meters high, and that island there are over 2,000 people living, and they have no bridge to go to the, to the mainland. And if we succeeded to get the permission, we can do, uh, they can walk in the water for two weeks. And this is the very early sketch <coughs> for the floating pier. And the process from there became to the very uh, ingenious way, working with the community there, the president, president uh, the, of the lake, the, the mayor of uh, Sultano and Monte Isola, the, uh, all the study, and because, it, because we were 
very precisely to tell the community that we do that project, if we can do faster, they was very co cooperative and very, from the beginning, very supportive and let us the work advance. Now, that time, the engineering of floating pier was totally changed from the early 70s. This Canadian engineer invented that very intricate system of cubes. They are only 50 by 50 centimeters, 40 centimeters high. Entire project was built by 220,000 cubes and 220,000 giant screw. That is the life site test. From there, we're moving for the engineers for the application. From there to the data for the application, we need to move these cubes in the Black Sea, when the Vladimir have a little house, to have all the information of the force of the wind, of the waves in the structure of floating piers. Each of these back is 1,000 kilos supporting and one square meters. And here our team is at the site of floating pier. Here the uh, several locations, actually four or five locations, we have a different angle degree that the floating pier do. And not floating pier also, they're not totally horizontal. Only the middle, <coughs> the middle section is 11 meter. It's about two and a half meter sloping down and became like a beach. All the, to fabricate the project, we need to create our old uh, mold to, to fabricate it non-stop around the clock, delivering the thousands of cubes. This is the profile how the cubes were fabricated engineering and the giant pin connecting the cubes. And of course, we need to hire incredible workforce. I can answer the question. This project can happen only because workforce, incredible workforce working around the clock and uh, screwing, put, putting together uh, uh, the floating pier. Basically, we have a three kilometer of floating piers, you see the line, and about two and a half kilometer of pedestrian street. Now, to keep this straight line, actually, the longest one is one kilometer, 100 meter, we need to install near 200 anchors each of them five tons deep down in the water. Now the water is not little lake. This is the uh, uh, glacier and the depth of the water is from 90 meter to 250 meter depth. And the deep water divers go down to install. Now in the, this balloon, there was no cranes, there are no machinery, all these hundreds of anchor, five tons each, they was floating under these balloons. And this is how they put down to the place. This is the deep water preparing to go underneath to, to connect the anchor with the steel frame structure of the floating pier. We fabricated 30 pieces of 60 meter wide and 100 meter long, who created one kilometer long. And from these 30 pieces now, let me go ahead, okay. If we show some drawings, here's the, our staging area. Here, our parking area, we have all this each 100 meter, and here now, all these floating pier, uh, piers, looking like that, they will be float to the sides where the anchors they already install and start connecting together here, surrounding the little islands of Sao Paulo, connecting the piers. All that was done around the clock work, and the entire project was built in less than two years. You see, from, uh, from these floating piers, uh, uh, we are uh, installing uh, our deep yellow fabric, not right away or on the cubes. On the cubes, we're installing special felt, about 10 millimeter felt, who will be covered the cubes. And now much of the work was bred by the helicopter. And finally, we hire <coughs> non-skilled worker, young people, go to the training to install the the, uh, the fabric. Now, the fabric was not like a carpet. He was really creating folds. This is, uh, uh, can I can show you to see how the, uh, the, the folds there uh, vertically basically is 20% more fabric in the length of the each pier. And the pier is connecting the mainland here in the left side. This is 650 meter to the little town of the Monte Isola and connecting to the little island of Sao Paulo when the, the piers is much more wider, 20 meters or more wide actually, 
on some occasion is 49 meters wide and creating like a beach area. They are also covering this two, one and a half, two kilometer walkway in the medieval towns around the, around the coastline of the project. During that installation, during the exhibition of the project, it was 16 days, three weekends, we have 80,000 people a day. And they was walking uh, uh, these three kilometers and also in the pedestrian street. The project also was working nonstop, basically. Uh, they open all the time. We have a special lighting system coming from the United States who was actually in the battery, breathed, uh, elevated the, uh, the lamp and is deleted uh, for eight hours. After to remove the battery, charge the battery, and return back for the light. This is where I'm almost the end, no? Yeah. Oh. And, and uh, okay. And now, what, now? Okay, that's all right. Okay, okay. Let's 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 put the lights. Thank you. Question and answer, and uh, I feel uh, free uh, to ask any question, but I will not answer question about religious politics, and certainly not about other artists. <laughs> okay, uh, now, now, but uh, uh, Madame, uh, we need to have a microphone. Uh, okay, we'll go that and everybody can hear you. Great. Um, all the compliments of the world. We've followed a lot of your projects in real life and my heart beats. Uh, but now the terrible question. How about the Colorado River? Uh -huh. What's happened? We go, uh, talk about over the river. The question is, I can, should tell you before that, that over 50 years, Jean-Claude and myself, we realized 23 projects and we failed to get permission for 37 projects. You know, this is very common things that we have uh, difficulty to do the project. Some project was refused and we don't like to do it anymore. Some project was refused and we start, to, we like to do it. Some project we have a permission and we decided to not do it. Uh, uh, the question is that, for example, the project of, you know, to do this project first, the most important thing Jean-Claude was saying, that this project we do for ourselves. If the people like, it's only bonus. If we, feel we don't have any more excitement or pleasure or ex anything to do the project, why I should do, we should do this project, spend our money for something we're not excited anymore? And uh, give a very funny example. In 1975, uh, we tried to rob the tallest monument of Christophe Columbus in Barcelona. We worked very hard, far hard in the beginning, in 1975-76, and the mayor of Barcelona uh, say no, and he was assassinated, but not by us. <laughs> there was another mayor of Barcelona in 1980. He also say no in 81. He, there was coup d'etat. He was almost killed, uh, but uh, not by us. Now, in 1984, uh, we received telegram. That time there was no email from the famous mayor of Barcelona, Pascual de Maragai, who brought the Olympic Games, and he said, Christo Jean-Claude, I give you permission, come to rob the monument of Christophe Columbus. We tell we don't like to do it anymore. <laughs> really, this is all our decision, is what we like to do. And to keep the, uh, or how to put it, to keep the sincerity 
and the real excitement, this is why we're doing it. Yeah, exactly the same thing. Yeah. We lost interest. It's lost interest. So where is your interest now? Now, I tell you, we're working on some project will actually death we work enormously is the master of United Arab Emirates. We started in 1979, you know. And this is the longest, longest affair we have with something lovely and Jean-Claude love it, I love it, and we are so excited and actually we're going next, m next month, in a few days from now, there, again, there, we work very much there. Okay, next question. The, the, uh, the gentleman. Thank you. Um, could, could you tell a bit, uh, us a bit about um, how your artistic style developed? Uh, what was the first idea or the inspiration to develop this kind of style? Ah, yes, this is the uh, very com uh, 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 not complicated, but very simple. You know, uh, first you should to uh, look at our work. You should uh, read them like reading a book, and if you're reading the book. You understand they're very, very normal. Uh, first, of course, come from my education. You know, Jean Claude, my mother uh, saw that I was a little boy drawing, uh, very little, like a five, six years old, and she have a she hired a private teacher to study uh, to study by artists painting, sculpture, making scale architecture. Little boy, instead to have a piano lesson, you go to painter. Uh, to architect and little boy to learn how to do. And since the age of six, I tried to be an artist. They know anything. Now, I, that, I studied in Bulgaria, and the art academy in Bulgaria, it was make and still like typical 19th century, mostly like a Kunst Academy in Munich, very, very academic, very uh, um, reactionary, but in some way very um, educational. To study art, Painting, sculpture, architecture, decorative art, he study eight years. The first four years study everything, including medicine. I have a dissection of human body on the university because it's part of the education of art. And, uh, and these four years, you study many things, architecture, painting, sculpture. And after, you did, after four years, you decided to be specialized to become painter, sculpture, architect. I escaped from communist country uh, my fourth year, and I arrived here in Europe and, and uh, to become an artist. And you see very well that I am not decided what I am yet. <laughs> when we wrapped the Reichstag, the first critic of New York Times was not art historian, was architectural critic. Basically, if you read our project, you can see they have many, many, many things from where I come, and this is the first thing to understand. They are not something like that. They are, uh, uh, they are involved with uh, um, uh, elements who usually the normal visual artists do not deal, uh, but engineer or builders of highway or bridges deal with all these things, all these uh, things. But the most important of, of all our work is this work is about the real thing. Nothing, nothing virtual. Real things. I can tell you what's many real things. They know, they know reemplacement of three kilometers. The real three kilometers in the water. The real wind. The real wet. The real dry. The real fear. Most of art today in any gallery is all illustration. Illustration of politics, illustration of things. They are no real things. They are images, flat images. The real things, basically, you need to enjoy it, you need to love the physicality of the things. For example, I have no stool in my studio. I am standing 15, 16 hours a day. I love to walk. I love to go, to move, to touch, to go around, because I love the space take you to go there. You know, all these things, and it's fascinating to see that some people looking at these flat images is excited, so banal and useless things. But if you develop this type of senses, from there everything is in, in limited, 
because it involves also tremendous human uh, relation, interaction, but with real people. For example, all our projects have a big political dimension. Many people even don't think that. I don't like to talk about that. But they are full of politics. They know probably any artist in the world do so much like with politics. You know very well, we all Germans. We get the permission for the Rappen Air attack because we are capable to defeat it. Helmut Kohl in the full debate of the nation parliament. What artist can say that he defeated the prime minister of the nation to have his project? Okay, basically. <laughs> but this is the, but to do that, you know how many hundreds of people we need to talk through all Germany? Because some of the deputy tell us, of the Bundestag tells us, I will vote for you, but you should come to my constituency to convince them why I should vote for you. And we're talking to the ordinary people, to the children, to retired people, and, uh, senior citizens at home, and to explaining why the project is happening. Our project is full of politics on all levels. Uh, high politics in Washington or with the governors and everything. But this is the real politics, not illustration of politics. I think the real, the real things. And this is why I am enjoying that. I love that uh, physicality with humans, communication, the touching, the, uh, um, we have a, a lot of, of problems, but that is part of the, the put you in the age nonstop all the time. There are no comfort zone on this project. There are continuous, continuous uh, unexpected aggravation, but that keep you alive. Okay? Yeah, dear Crystal, welcome back to Berlin. I'm very, very happy that you come here to, to have your show. And um, I must say I'm very, very, very deeply touched by your work, by your, the work of you and Chris Jean-Claude. And uh, it's, it's really fantastic what you do. And um, before I have two questions, before I um, ask them, I want to say that uh, somebody was asked one, one, uh, one time, what is art? And he said, uh, if it makes me happy. No? And I think you make so many people happy with your art. And I've seen that in the, in the Reichstag. I've only seen two projects, only Reichstag and, and the Lago di Zeo. And I was very, very touched by Lago di Zeo. And I was weeping when I was walking there. And I, it was really fantastic. And, um, but I have two questions. Uh, one question is, uh, what is your favorite project? <laughs> and then, what is, what's, what's your most difficult project? Most? The most difficult. Second question. You know, uh, there are a variety of difficulty. I try to think, I cannot compare the difficulty. And uh, logistically, probably, uh, problematically, how to get the permission, the rice tank was most complicated. Uh, and the process of permission, because involving, uh, 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 in the end, involving the entire nation, because there was no way to do the project if the parliament not decided the decision of the project. But sometimes it's, uh, different difficulties, like uh, Japan, uh, the umbrellas in Japan and California, there was the involving two cultures and the problems between the, the culture in Japan, the culture in the Western culture in the United States was enormous different, different part, difficult part, but it cannot be compared. Now, what project is more uh, enjoyable? Jean-Claude was much better to answer to that question, but I tried to remember what she was saying. Uh, uh, she was asking the Sir, how many children you have? How many? Three. Three. Uh, what child is most lovable? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Each of our project is like child for us. You know, they happen in particular time of our life. We love it for that reason. For example, Jean Claude might say, "We well, always like to return to the site of the project." The last time before she passed away was in Australia, it was 2007, and we arrived in the coast cliffs of Australia with the sharks, the wind, and I remember dislocated my shoulder when I tried to wrap some boulder. Jean-Claude was thinking probably we're totally nuts to try to do that project, 
but we did it, we were younger, and what's happened? Basically, you know, really, that uh, uh, the, the return to the site of the project was always enormous pleasure for our, because the project is not anymore there, but it's part of our, our journey. And I try to understand, the project is not the 14 days or 16 days exhibition. The project is an entire journey of several weeks or months, etc. And, and of course, uh, also, is, you should understand the project, all our projects have uh, this distinct period. There are two different phases. One phase is when the project do not exist, and uh, often we say that the software period. The project exists only in the drawings and the sketches and the mind of people who try to help us and the mind of people who try to stop us. Now, through that software period, where the project physically do not, is not there, the people think how the project will look terrible or how the project will look very good. But develop participatory public much before the physical object exists. And, and when, if, if we won't get the permission, we finally will move to the hardware period when the physical, the physical side of the project is there, the kilometer of fabric, or ops, cable, etc. And all that together is the work of art. It's not the, the only 14 days of exhibition because all the, all the expectation, all the movement, all the dynamics, they accomplish finally in that you, sublime moment who is perfect. And this is why this project cannot stay. They go because that moment cannot be can, cannot be bought. It's the moment of energy cannot stay like a normal exhibition things and museum around the world. Other question? Yeah, here the young man. Hi. Hi. Um, fair. First of all, thanks for the talk. And uh, these events are all about courage, right? So uh, <laughs> I wonder what kind of advice would you personally g give to young artists who, for example, want to uh, realize their own project or even big project? For example, if I'd say now, man, I want to rep the Gold Great Bridge now. Or okay. would you say, yeah, do it, try? Or <laughs> would you say, you should start with repping your mother's house or something? <laughs> Uh, uh, I, I you know very well that the project is, you know, starts right, right way is uh, all the uh, first in putting in the retros in, um, general view uh, all the project we try to do they are not impossible project they are not first engineering wise or uh, designing wise they are very common sense things they are not some fabulous engineering some mysterious. Um, system of things, or not electronics, not uh, computers, no anything. They are very uh, directly related to your finger. They are very uh, mechanical. But probably that is the most difficult part to do very, very simple engineering, starting with the, how the project will be built. You know, it's not easy because even today, all, like I'm, we often we hire wrong people. We need to fire the wrong people because you don't find this great putting together teams by miracle. You need to put together. Uh, by the way, you should know, it's not me or Jean-Claude or Vladimir, another nephew of Jonathan, do this project. Each project has his own team of project directors, engineers, lawyers, all variety of people. And that is the essential part to, to create the work. The enormous uh, um, uh, putting together energy of humans, uh, love actually, and, and incredible things. And that is the essential part to do this project because then one person cannot do that, that work. We need to put together people together, to have people to think how back together. And you see very well in the floating pier that we cannot decide it even how the project will be built in the studio in Manhattan. We always need to do life site stays. We need to find place. We need to find advisors, all, all many things. But you ask me, I like to wrap it. I don't know, you like to do that, wrap that building. I don't know. But it's not like that. It's, you should do something, you can do it. Do it. That's all. <laughs> Other question? <laughs> Up there, if somebody likes to have question, I don't see anybody, but if they're, okay, the young lady should be more active there, please. <laughs> yeah. Hello, 
Um, You're very you. high up there. I'm here. Okay. I'm, oh, sorry. I'm okay. Here. There. Okay. Um, I was very skeptical about the rice talk, and then I ended up being there every day. Thank you for that. It was really fantastic. My question: Is there any meaning to how many umbrellas, how many gates, how wide, how uh -huh. long, and everything? In, is the, the, no, the number is not meaning. The number is you not. Know, they come because. When I artists decided so much to put blue there. <laughs> you know, there are no meanings. They, they, the, the number is not some kind of uh, f fancy, mysterious number. But I, I, I use this number to tell you that because each project is like a part of my existence, I know these numbers. <laughs> it's not, I like to, they like, and they come from simple uh, uh, aesthetic. Take the case of the, uh, running fence in Northern California became 40 kilometers because uh, really, we, Jean Crote and myself, we designed the fence. You know, the, the fence, the story of the fence, I should explain it. We tried to do project links uh, the water on the ocean and inland and the coastline of California when you have this coastal culture. You know, the, the coastal California is much more warmer. You have a continuous coastal, coastal culture with the coast and the people living near the coast. And, and one important thing in California is the highway. The highway is the, like a vein in the human body going to the state of California. We decided to build a project north of San Francisco and Bodega Bay for half a kilometer. We go through the countryside, crossing county roads, small roads, town and villages, and we were very eager that the fence cross in, uh, highway number 101 going from San Diego to, or to Canadian border. And uh, that number one, uh, 101 was 24 miles from the coast. And if number 101 was 10 miles from the coast, running fence would be only 10 miles. <laughs> and this is why. Uh, yeah. And it's part of the uh, aesthetics that in the project have. Yes. Yes, thank you. Um, during all your early projects, the love between you and Jean-Claude was so visible and apparent to all of us. What did you do to replace when she passed away? How did you replace the emptiness? Uh, no, she's always with us, you know, should know that. It's not emptiness because uh, uh, it's, uh, in the two, actually, the whole project up to now, including the f floating pier, was start with her. And uh, often, it cannot be replaced. And I remember when we have a problem, I ask always Jonathan, Jean-Claude nephew, Vladimir, uh, my nephew, when we have uh, some big problems, we, all, we ask, what Jean-Claude we say now? <laughs> and of course, she was a very, very critical person. Probably this is I miss more uh, of everything. She was also argumentative, uh, uh, critical, and anything we decided to do, and it cannot be replaced, but we try to be critical. We try to um, check or recheck or rethink different solutions, all kind of things. This is a long process of things. Yes, the, yeah. the gentleman there. Um, you said that getting the permission is sometimes uh, one of the hardest parts of the project, but do you feel that after you had so successful projects, getting a permission is sometimes getting easier, or is it always different issues with the government, whatever? It's always more difficult. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we never have problem more difficult like now. You know, because you cannot compare. They, uh, they differ. It, it, it can, because, uh, very important thing, we never do the same things again. They will never wrap another parliament, never will build another running fence, or install another gate. Each project is totally new, completely new visual things. And sometimes very courageous to find people to let you do this project. And you saw the floating pier, but you saw blasé, you don't see what is the most courageous person in that project. That project can happen only in one country. And only one country probably was decisive to give us permission. 
not, cannot be happening in Germany, cannot be in Japan, not in the United States, not in any other Western country. And, but you don't see, but it was so important things. It's so visible that floating pier has no parapet. Rail. The water is 100 meter depth. Ask what city will allow to build bridge with no rail. <laughs> Imagine, that is the incredible story. Uh, 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 there are no rail and five, uh, three kilometer walk, uh, uh, very deep water. Um, I'm coming from Bagnang. It's a small town in the southern part of Germany. Do you remember? There was the um, old spinning factory Adolf, where yes, in... Yes, yes. yes, yes he did it around the town. Okay. Um, I have a letter for you with some pictures and an, a letter, yeah. and I would like it to give you. Is it possible? Thank yeah. <laughs> Thank Where? <laughs> okay, uh, somebody there to give a, a service, please? Uh, uh, yeah, on the top balcony, please. I'm sorry, I, but they should, they should Can you hear vocal. me now? <laughs> Hello, yes. thank, you f thank you for the presentation at first, but I would like to hear from you a couple of words about your uh, emotional intention, especially if you compare your projects with the children of the others. I mean, they're all a piece of yourself and uh, what is specifically about wrapping uh, things all around the world. I mean, if you... you like to, about the wrapping. Uh, about the wrapping, yes. Um, I mean, do you hide them or... Uh, okay, it is, okay, 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 uh, I, I understand. I w it's not, the umbrella was not wrapped, but I would tell you about the wrapping. Uh, okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> Uh, the cloth or the fabric is the one of the principal element to tr translate this nomadic characters of our project. You know, they're built with many materials, steel, cables, but the fabric is the most bigger part and is installed very fast, very like a nomadic type build their tents and is removed very fast. This is the, the, the material, the cloth using in our project. It's not uh, a normal textile, it's the industrial textile, it's very heavy duty textile, another story. But there are some project, like the Rap Coast in Australia, or the Pony of the Reichstag, they was wrapped. They really wrapped. The building was wrapped, the coastline, the boulders was wrapped. They really physically covered with fabric. Now, the fabric, use of the fabric and history of art is all the, like the history of art. For thousand years, the artists used the fabric in the sculpture and painting. Of course, there was not real fabric, it was chisel and marble, on bronze and wood, and actually can recognize the style of period through the folds. For, for example, medieval sculpture, the folds, they're much more angular when they're folds in the Baroque sculpture of Bernini and Michelangelo, much flamboyant. But the best example about the fabric in the traditional sculpture is the history of the French sculptor Rodin. And that is story not invented by me, it's true story. You know, the, uh, uh, Rodin received the command of the government of France to, be, to make the monument of Balzac. And the, it did two versions of the figure of Balzac. The first version was uh, Balzac was totally naked. Billy, big belly, skinny legs, and many details. <laughs> what literally uh, Rodin did, he took the cap of Balzac and fabric, put it in liquid plaster, a shroud, the figure of Balzac we have now on Boulevard Traspai in Paris and Museum of Modern Art in New York. Basically, he hides all the details in the skinny, big body of Balzac with fabric and highlight the principal proportion of the figure of Balzac. With our wrapping project, we do exactly that. You see very well, perfect example, the Reichstag building, a ballot building with a lot of ornament and decoration was all hidden by our silver color fabric, and when the wrap rice tag was wrapped, you read much better the geometry of the towers, the front on everything, 
was precisely designed because all the details, the window, the sculpture, everything was gone, highlight the principal proportion of the building. In like this normal sculpture, all our wrapping things like the Australia coast, the Pony of, there was not static image you can see here. They're like living object. They're moving nonstop with the wind all the time. They're breathing. And I'll give you another beautiful example. This is the, uh, the most uh, invitational part of our project, which uh, you have this hidden invitation. You are all Berliner probably remember the, the wrapping of the Reichstag was done by rock climbers. There no scaffolding. They was coming down from the top of the Reichstag and ropes, installing the fabric, securing the ropes, and they will see through working fence we built around that the people can watch the wrapping of the Reichstag. After that, remove the fence and the people start to walk around the Reichstag. And you see that people will come close to the building, they was close to the building, and after that they can push the fabric to see how much fabric is out of the building, touch the fabric, you don't see any people in Berlin walking and touching the buildings. <laughs> okay, everything is there. You can see that our project. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Where are you? Up there? Hi. Okay. Here. Um, so first of all, thank you very much for your projects. They, they really do the world a better place. And thank you for your passion that is very inspiring for new young artists. Um, I have mainly two questions. First of all, where do you find your inspiration mostly? And second, um, how was working with Jean-Claude for, for the, your whole life? So uh, you no. said she was very critic, but how was to work with her? How did you start? And um, also, how it became official? I don't understand. How official? How it became official when you started working with, with Jean-Claude. Oh, first, we were very, very two young person making love, and we love each other. <laughs> <laughs> very good starting we were point. We very young. We were the same age. We were 21 and a half. 22. <laughs> the other question was what? <laughs> uh, the inspiration, inspiration. Look. Inspiration, inspiration. <laughs> you know, there is no recipe for inspiration. They, 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 I, they, you don't have a, uh, I don't have a piles of idea and I pull like, I don't put my finger there to go there and there. You know, there are many, many circumstances, and, and I don't like to ask, answer that uh, in gener generality, but I give you an example. How we go around the world to places is not by accident. For example, take the case of Mastaba, because I don't like to discussing that in general. You know, the project was type of project very much that idea, but we need to find the li right location. And <clears throat> When the project was refused in Texas in mid-60, again, we cannot do it in Holland in early 70, we became friends with the French representative of the United Nations, Monsieur Louis de Guerengo, who was a curator. This is 1972 in New York. And he came to see us, and he saw the drawings for the Texas Master Bar, for the uh, uh, Dutch uh, Hotel Master Bar, and he told Christo, probably we'll have a better chance that Right now, in 1972, new nation was created and called United Arab Emirates, and that these adventurers, very uh, open uh, uh, ruler, Sheikh Zayed Al Nahyan of Abu Dhabi, put together these seven sheikhdoms, and he created that nation who was pro former British protectorate. Jean Claude and myself have no slightest idea what is Abu Dhabi or United Arab Emirates. And uh, I, uh, we have a books, we try to go more about that, and, and, and uh, it was impossible to, to think that one day we arrive there. But when Giscard d'Estaing was elected president of France, he nominated our friend to become secretary of state, foreign minister of France, and I remember Jean-Claude say, Louis, we like to go to Abu Dhabi. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why if Mr. Girengo was not, became foreign minister of France, 
We've we never been in Abu Dhabi. He organized our arrival in Abu Dhabi in the late 70s because the, to go to that time in Abu Dhabi, you cannot go like that. And this is, after that is the history. You know, all our projects related all many, many things. And they, we need to have a chance to have this. It's the same thing is Mrs. Susbott was not elected the president of German uh, Bundestag, the Reichstag probably will never be wrapped. We'll be, you go to the sixth president of the Bundestag. And the same things with Mr. Bloomberg. He was, if there was no mayor, Bloomberg, mayor of New York City, that we know much before, even was thinking to be a mayor, probably the guess will never happen. You know, there's so many, many uh, crossing things in life. You cannot say that happened simple. Other question? The lady. Yeah, first of all, thank you very much and thank Jean-Claude very much for all the beautiful art that you've done so far and that you will do in, in the future. Um, I know that the ephemeral is an important part of your art, but do you sometimes feel sad that once the, the art is, or the artwork is taken down again, the, the bodily sensation can no longer be repu reproduced because especially thinking back to the sensation of the lightness of being I had when I walked uh, over the floating piers, I definitely sometimes can feel sadness over the fact that I will never experience that, that again. That is exciting, beautiful. That you have that sadness because you appreciate it much more. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, um, it, 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 I, I tell you that this project have this click of time cannot be repeated. And this is why they have this uh, 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 urgent, urgency to be seen, to be there, because tomorrow will be gone. They cannot be bought. You cannot bought that things. You cannot charge tickets because it's the freedom. Freedom cannot be bought. And that is this project physically, they exist in so much freedom that is unthinkable can be kept to become a museum piece or something like that. And this is why we're not sad, on the contrary, we're relieved. I can tell you, the most draining, the most exhausting is that when the project is exhibited. This is like 24 hours around the clock and Jean-Claude, everybody was a Jean-Claude uh, asked that question, Jean-Claude, not at all, oof, it's gone. Finally, I can relax. <laughs> no, but really, no, but it's something, uh, and, and we always like to go back to the side because it's part of the, the place, but it's the exciting that uh, there, uh, it's not only the, the thing is not there anymore, you cannot have that time anymore, the time who was the, for the Reichstag and that incredible moment of 1995 of summer. Never happened again. But good weather, yeah. No, no. Excuse me. No, no. Do we have a, we we. Always have good weather. No, we have a good weather. We have snow. We have no, no. But but uh, you know, you know the, like the project of Gates have us even snow in the good weather. But the 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 the, 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 the project is happen in the place that have a variety of. Uh, Weather and we accept in this condition. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, for example, they designed it. Okay, I should p show you that the, all this project they designed for a particular season of the year. Like for example, surrounded island of Florida was designed to be in the springtime before the hurricane in Miami came late in the season. This, the same things. The gates we like to do it in the leafless tree when. During the summer, Central Park is like a forest. You cannot see the gates. We need to have this uh, um, um, silver color branches of the tree against the skyline of Manhattan, the gray dark color of the winter days. At the same time, the fabric color, and of course, the contrast of the fabric with the, all the gray days of winter, or even snow. All that is part of the season of the project, the same thing with the umbrellas, the autumn days. All uh, is part designed, and these 16 days is designed for a particular season on each side. From the umbrellas was the late uh, summer, early October, when we have the rice field 
rice is curled, and you have an incredible, beautiful water and Sato River in Japan. There was no water in Southern California, all this many parts. Other question? Excuse me? Yeah, the gentleman here. Yeah. Uh, what about the starting point of every project? Is there a precise moment in your head that you already have the image of the yeah. project or it's a period of... No, the, the, the first, the, the image of the project, they're very simple images, they're, they're not complicated images. The, the, it's, it's really to, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to create a, uh, they, 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 the site is very important. The site, a site. And the site is related to the, some way to the images, and they are woven with the images. It's not, it's not simple, the images there, and this is not related to the site. You know, the site, urban or rural site, is all that. But there's, there, are no, there are no rules, there are no any of this. There are no any of that. But they are very much what we like to do. We like to work with the place used by humans. Basically, the space, meaning that we like to engage the movement of humans, the space of humans, meaning that it's not uh, the moment you walk uh, out of your home, somebody decides the sidewalk. You cross the street, somebody decides the street. Basically, you funnel 24 hours around the clock with highly de designed physical space by the, uh, by the governmental agency, by the all kind of, we even don't think about that. And exactly, we are looking for that intricate space by, because they work outside of your room there in public space, to engage that uh, space with your body. It can be urban or rural process, or rural site. And this is all the project they done when the people spend their time walking or related to movement themselves. And, and to, for the, all the project, that is coming also in the process of the permission. Because I hope you understand, we are renting the space. <laughs> we pay $3 million rents to the city of New York. We're renting the space physically, and we became responsible for that space and to make the people moving to that space, functioning in that space, and uh, we benefit from the energy that space is built up through many circumstances. This is the, the same for all the projects. Yes, sir. I was working on the zoning period in Lago Mundeo. Yeah. And it was so fabulous, and it was like a procession of the whole <laughs> No, no, first I can tell you, we never, first, we, the, yeah. No, but, but the, 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 oh, that is coming to the tactile quality of this project. The entire project was designed to walk in the water. In the early years, that system of cubes do not exist. We were using old-fashioned pantoon for the project in Argentina or Japan. But when that system was in, in designed, invented, early 2000, that building that surface of these connecting cubes. Basically, the cubes connecting, they're connecting crisscross like that, exactly like the fabric, the cloth is woven, one piece, point, one piece like that. This is why the surface became really like a moving water. It's not like a wood or boat shark. They're like, you see it, water moving in your feet. And this was the most important part. This is why the, that, first, Jean, uh, the, myself, or Vladimir, and friends, we never think that people will walk so much. Because we were thinking that one kilometer is quite a long walk. And if it's very hot, it will be very hot. We would think people will stop walking when they return back. But the, that was the invitation to walk. And, and, and was also invitation that you remove your shoes, you try to walk barefoot, because it was the surface, it was very warm, anything. And, and, and one thing it became because the, 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 the pleasure to walk is so invitational that I was saying the people walk to go nowhere. They was going to nowhere, they were simply walking. They was not going to see friends or to, to shop or anything, they were simply walking. And that created also the, the, the discovering the, the surface, that the, the surface does not banal surface. So. <laughs>
Okay, other question? Yeah, here. Um, I hope it's on. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, thank you uh, for your wonderful art. Um, I have actually two questions. Uh, one is, you said that everything is possible. So, is there any project you dream of which you can't make true or which you aren't not, are, are not yet um, able to realize? And the second question is, how dangerous is your art? I mean, when before they they wrapped the Reichstag, they just uh, tested it with Molotov cocktails. So, um, pardon? <laughs> how dangerous is your art? Be because yeah, because they they, they, they have tested it um, or they, they have tested it before it was wrapped. Um, testing the fabric. So They're testing the fabric. Okay. Well, the, 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 you know, they the, the induced, uh, first, the material we use, they're not, uh, especially if we talk for the fabric, is not a clothing fabric. It is industrial textile, and it's fabricated for the environmental, structural purposes, agricultural purposes. For example, the fabric we use for the rap course in Australia was not a fiber, a round fiber, it was a mesh who was woven and is used in South Pacific area they call for the farmers. The farmers cover, cover the good earth and the crop with that fabric. When the typhoons come, they not remove the good earth and the crop can grow through the fibers and to grow, right. basically. This type of material we used for our project with the industrial textile fabricated for variety of uh, industrial, agricultural, environmental purposes, a little bit uh, changed. But there, their material existing. Now, the project to be approved, we go through the many things. The case of the Reichstag should be flame retarded. There was uh, so many in study from the German government because it will be not put on fire. So many things, the strength also, a variety of things. But this is part of any construction site. You go through the building permission. You're obliged to apply to all this quality and you have a governmental official to inspect, to, uh, to see everything has happened. And, and, and we also the higher, entire uh, fabric, entire installation of the project before the rock climbers come down, but it was done, done by the steel workers, you saw very well. There was a huge framework of the steel who was designed to create the uh, um, um, uh, space that our fabric folding or cascading uh, over, the, uh, over the building, and all thing was designed by us to create it all this deep, you know. Uh, I, I actually, the rice tank was physically expanding about two and three meters, much more in all direction. And when the fabric was coming down from the top, coming down and attached to the rope, secured the rope through the window open, the shadow, the, fa the fabric was restrained to the building so much and created like sculptural shadow, but that do not exist in the real rice stack. Exists by the because we advance steel frames to create. There are many sculptural parts done to part of aesthetics of the project, like you can see it. That was done also for the Pont Neuf. You know, they not simply we wrap the things like that. Oh, and it's designed, and we work with engineers, the architects, position things, we do scale models, there are many, many things to look the things we like to look and to, to create that sculptural dimension of the, especially for the Reichstag project we're discussing. And they're part of the professional people we need to hire to, to work with us, to give us advice and to fight with them and try to convince them, change things and many, many things. Well, actually, um, the, the question was about if it, if it was misused once, um, your art for, for protest and if it was like, um, if it gun and, and not in flames or yeah. something, that something like this. So if yeah, somebody uh, used your art to protest, because If the, if the rice tank can burn on fire, that is the question or what? <laughs> no, the fabric is B, what's both you have the, the title and then.
Yeah, that's what I that's what I meant. That's what I meant that they that they tested it. But if you yeah, if but you that are is the, but that is the very normal things we go through all the uh, permission that any project you know. That's yeah. Uh -huh, okay. Uh, the graffiti. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, we. Uh, 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 we, we, of course, we were uh, thinking that there would be a graffiti, and of course, we bought a silver color paint to paint the graffiti in the bottom of the somebody. And 14 days, there was no single graffiti on the rice tag. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And and your project, you um, you ever dreamed of, and 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 you have not yet realized. Well, actually, I, I, the, I that was the first the question. The if you have ever dreamed of a project, you can't can realize, realize, cannot realize. realize, or you are are not able, are not ah, yet if, able to realize. I, okay. No, we we uh, 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 generally all our project, they are very simple, possible, realized project. We know we do not do anything cannot be realized. It's not, uh, uh, not complicated, I always say in the beginning. All our proposal, they're very, very simple, ordinary uh, mechanical things. Uh, uh, they're difficult to get permission. It's always the most difficult part, but they're not impossibly physically. They're very, very simple. Uh, they're not uh, complicated to build, no complicated to fabricate it. But of course, the most difficult part is the permission. Even today, after so many years, permission is still the most difficult part. So you don't have any dreams? No, no any? You have still any dreams? Which I have a dreams, of course. I uh, work in project. I say we work in the master bar. OK, yeah, but then you. <laughs> Once we get the permission, we need to three years for the project. Yeah. Does it look okay? You look okay. Yeah, of course, so much. <laughs> Other question? Yes. Where are you? Finance your projects. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Hello. I yes, as I said, indiscreet question, but there are only indiscreet answers. Uh, how do you finance your project? I was hoping to somebody ask me, and now stay and listen about that. Because <laughs> it is the only way to understand if you were, I tell you, many, many years ago, in the time of the Arab Coast in Australia, our principal lawyer of Chicago, Scott Horace, say, you know, to do this project, you need to create normal corporation. No non-profit corporation. Corporation who was the holding company, New York State Corporation and State of Delaware Corporation. The corporation is called CVG Corporation. Is my initial, Christoph Vladimirov Yavashev. And that holding company is created to sell your original works of art, to buy back your original works of art, and to pay building the project you like to build. And that corporation is the company who built our project. Now, being young myself and Jean-Claude, very early ages, when we were 28, 29, we have a gallery exhibition, but no gallery was interested to have an exclusivity with us. And today, ourselves, myself and Jean-Claude, we're the biggest collectors of our work. We have enormous storages. Our principal storage is in Basel, Switzerland. We have uh, curators. And that corporation have uh, the wealth to build the project. Basically, the corporation sell the, the project is not paid by the preparatory drawings of that project. The project is paid by all the works of art we have from 1958 to today that we sell to DOT. Now, each time we created, uh, a, a building a new project, making a new project, their company, the case of Germany, there was the Reibs Reichstag Company, Verhulte Reichstag Company, who was the German corporation. That corporation was subsidiary of the New York Corporation, and that corporation was paying the bills 
for the workers here, etc. But the money come from the principal corporation in New York. Now, some of you, the artists, and you have a friends artists or galleries, you know that the people who buy art, they're collectors, dealers, or uh, co uh, corporate collectors. They buy art, but they're only notoriously slow payers. <laughs> they buy work of art and they pay an installment or they pay not right away. And of course, we cannot say to our workers, we cannot pay you on Friday because Mr. Smith, who bought, he don't pay yet. This is why our corporation, who, because we have all these holdings, work with banks. A bank secure standby line of credit. That meaning that we have a, a money, it is not a loan, we pay only the rent for that money to millions of dollars. We will take some money, we pay the interest, but it's there, the, it's secured by the collaterals of our original works of art. It gives us that the freedom how we build this project. And this is how we spend millions of millions of millions of euro to do that project. Because sir, probably you'd like to know more about that. After the Gates project, we received a call for, from Harvard Business School. Harvard Business School in Cambridge, Massachusetts, teach by cases. Their case of Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, and their case of Christo Jean-Claude, how pay for their project. About 30 pages case, and you can click on that, you can have a lot of information from the bankers how this project they pay. This is how all the works of art is paid independently by the our CVG Corporation. No taxpayer money, no donation, no grants, no anything. Total freedom. Now, an important part to tell you why we did we'll do this project, there's another important part that if you if you like to know, Madame, if the new project come up, the lady who asked me question, you have no new project. Uh, you can go to the copyright. To have a copyright on word, you need to apply. And if you like to know that something happened, and this is what happened with the friend discovered for floating pier, because we applied to floating pier for the copyrights two years before everybody know now. Nah? Some friend discovered that there was something going up called floating piers. And this is why it's not secret. Next time, sometime can click copyright around the world to see if something appear suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we do that because we, we, we have absolute right, uh, we're very demanding that nothing can be used for any publicity to stop. I don't know if you remember, but when we get, when we try, when we get the permission for the rice tank, you probably don't remember, but some Berliner remember, we have a, a call from the three tenor. The three tenor try to sing on the front of our price tag. <laughs> of course, no, because we have a copyright and all that area around the rice tag. I left Bulgaria in 1956, never been back. Why? <laughs> no, never been back to Bulgaria since 1956. Christo. Okay. I wanted to come to honor you with the, with the gold medal of the longest Q&A ever. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wonder, wonder, wonderful. Thank you very much. It's just in time. It's 90 minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Christo. That was lovely.